at all. J.P. Morgan's predecessors, at least two of their predecessors, Citizens Bank and Canal Bank in the interval 1831 to 1865, were engaged directly in the slave trade by accepting 30, 13,000 enslaved persons as collateral for loans that were issued in Louisiana in the mid-19th century. When borrowers defaulted, the bank took direct ownership of these individuals and apparently sold them off at auction. I would propose that the role of slavery in American society is so pervasive that if we were to address what these institutions ought to do as of 2005, we need to go beyond the decisions that some of them have made, like the Wachovia Corporation, for example, to provide a certain amount of scholarships for African Americans, and come directly to the question of the construction of an alliance of lobbyists who would promote the case for reparations for African Americans with the United States Congress. I would argue that all of these institutions collectively should do so, and I'm going to try to make a case as to why this makes a great deal of sense this evening. Well, let me begin by suggesting what I perceive to be as the primary objectives of a program of reparations. Three major factors I view as, as the primary objectives of a program of reparations. First, acknowledgement. Second, redress. And third, closure. Acknowledgement, redress, and closure. Acknowledgement refers to recognition of a grievous injustice committed by an institution or group that bears responsibility for the action. This includes the necessity of a formal apology. Redress refers to compensatory actions taken to mitigate, to the extent possible, the long-term consequences of the grievous injustice. Now, with respect to reparations due African Americans, this would involve the design and implementation of a program that would eliminate historically generated racial disparities in the United States caused by slavery, legal segregation, and ongoing discrimination. And finally, closure refers to a settling of accounts, a healing process brought to fruition. Concretely, again, with respect to reparations for African Americans, it would mean that in the aftermath of an effective reparations program, no further claims for race-based initiatives on behalf of blacks for the wrongs of slavery, Jim Crow, and past discrimination would be forthcoming. Now this closure aspect really bothers some folks, but I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Okay? Now ironically, recent interest in this issue for African Americans, I think, was sparked most vigorously by the notorious advertisement attacking reparations that was placed by David Horowitz in numerous campus newspapers on behalf of his Center for the Study for Popular Culture about three years ago. Thus far, there is no official support for reparations for major credible civil rights organizations in the United States, including the NAACP and the National Urban League. The organization that has stood most solidly as an advocacy group for reparations is the National Coalition on Black Reparations, known as INCOBRA, which is not as widely known or as widely visible as either the NAACP and the National Urban League. And INCOBRA also conceives of itself as functioning philosophically outside of a, na of a narrow civil rights discourse and instead is operating as part of a wider human rights discourse. discourse. 